WGSR 47.1. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. I couldn't stay in Johnny at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them. Some of y'all, get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please, don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance, and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for, what does the Bible say? Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word of the Lord. James Offer here with you. Glad you tuned in. It's always a, it's always a juggling act to get everything set up the way we want it, but uh, appreciate you tuning in and uh, hope that you uh, are ready for another study from God's Word. Tonight, we're actually going to be looking at some things that uh, I'm, I'm calling this, we know they know how now. Now we know they know how. That's, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And we're going to be addressing or looking at some issues that prove that people do know how to uh, ascertain authority or define authority, to reason from the scriptures about why they do what they do and why they do it with God's approval. So we know they know how. The question is, will they continue doing it? First, we want to get our information up here so you can see it. This is where you can reach us, 250 the Boulevard, there in Eden, 276-340-2653 or 336-394-5721, word from the Lord at gmail.com. Here's my email address, of course, those of you in the Martinsville area, uh, 823 Starling Avenue, uh, 120 American Legion in Danville is, um, is where the saints meet, and uh, I know they'd be glad for you to come by and visit with them and study God's Word any opportunity they have. Sundays... <clears throat> Sundays at 10 and 11, you, at any of these places you can uh, study with God's people are Tuesday nights in, Mar in Danville, Wednesday nights in Martinsville, or Thursday nights in Eden, 7 o'clock each night you can visit with us. Also want to say welcome to those of you who are still watching up in Michigan. We uh, appreciate the, the work that's going on up there with the brethren who uh, uh, have helped us get on, and we hope that this will continue uh, in the future. But those of you who are watching and calling and uh, emailing, we get some emails. I meant to tell Mark, he's standing right here, that we got an email from a guy uh, in Michigan that said he appreciated the, the lesson on uh, uh, Born in Sin. And so uh, so appreciate that. And so we know they're watching up in various parts of Michigan, so we appreciate that work. Stay tuned for Religious Review tonight after the, after the news. Brother Johnny Robertson is here, and he'll be... Conducting that sounds like a very good in, uh, lesson as well. I uh, want to start off with 2 Chronicles 36, verse 15. The Lord God of their father sent to them by his messengers rising up be times, that's early, and sending because he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of God of the Lord arose against his people Till there was no remedy. Friends, oftentimes what we do is we bring lessons, we talk about topics, we discuss different issues. Uh, oftentimes it may seem like it's redundant. Maybe we're always, seem like we're always harping on the same thing, maybe. That's what you think. But this has always been the case with God's messengers. They rise up early and they speak in order to get people to know what the will of God is. And oftentimes, 
Such is the case as it was then, it is today. They're mocked. The messengers of God are mocked and they're despised, misused. And people reject <clears throat> the word of God and thus the wrath of God is going to come upon them. Friends, we don't want the wrath of God to come upon you. Neighbors, we don't want God's wrath to come upon you until there is no remedy. We want you to be saved. And so that's why we constantly go over some things that you might think are just uh, redundant, repetitive, but there's a reason for that. You know, the three keys of learning <clears throat> are repetition, repetition, and repetition. And so it is the case when we talk about finding authority. Now, friends, when we talk about finding authority, we're talking about giving a reason why you do what you do and doing that with uh, a uh, proof, if you will, or a reason from God's word. In Colossians 3 and verse 17, Paul said, And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now, this is our authority. Whatever we do, we want authority. We want to thus set the Lord. We want God's approval for why we do what we do. And that's what we're asking you. That's why we say, you know, go ask your preacher. See if he can find the sinner's prayer in the Bible. Or see if he can find the, uh, uh, the, the Baptist or the Methodist or Lutheran church in the Bible. See if he can find, the, you know, the mourner's bench in the Bible. See if he can find these things in the Bible. See if there is biblical authority for it. That's what we're asking for. And so it may seem like that we're constantly going on these things, but... We often need to repeat it because that is what's going to get people to start to realize, you know what, I do need to have Bible for why I do what I do. I was having a conversation online with a, a young lady uh, this, this past week, and she said, well, she said, you know, well, well, we believe the Bible. Okay, that's great. That's great. That's exactly what we want. We want people to say the Bible is the authority. And then I said, well, where do you find what you're saying in the Bible? Well, I just think you're judging. Now, see, that's, that's not what we're talking about. She recognizes we need to find authority, but when you press and say, well, just give me the Scripture, that's all I want. Well, you're being judgmental. No, we're not trying to be judgmental, friends. We're just trying to get you to find authority for why you do what you do as worship to God or in the name of God or in the name of serving God. Now, the reason why I know we need to repeat it is because we're constantly seeing in the news, we're constantly seeing areas where people fail to uh, find authority and it always gets you in trouble. Friends, when you don't have authority for why you do what you do, it's going to get you in trouble, not just with God, but probably with your fellow man. Now notice this. Here's what's been in the news lately. The Surrey Baptist Association, this is Surrey County, North Carolina, up Mount Airy Way, I guess, has been in the news of late because of women pastors. Now, I understand that back in August, they had some issue with uh, one of the local churches, uh, Baptist churches, the Flat Rock Baptist Church, uh, that uh, decided that they're going to have a female pastor. And that's what, that's what they decided to do. They went through all the, the, the details of selecting a, a so-called pastor, and they selected uh, Miss uh, Bailey Edwards Nelson, took over as senior pastor of Flat Rock, uh, the Flat Rock uh, uh, Baptist Church. And uh, as a result, as a result, the Surrey Baptist Association uh, decided that they were going to withdraw fellowship from the Flat Rock Baptist Church. They were going to remove them out of the association because they, the, the Baptist Association, the Surrey Baptist Association, determined that this is not uh, in line with God's authority. You see this? Now, this was in August. Now, here's an, a more recent uh, article, and this is why I'm saying it gives you trouble on down the line. Now, this is from yesterday or two days ago. First Baptist Church pulls out of Surrey Association. Now, here's, the, here's the, the first paragraph. It says, one of the area's largest churches has withdrawn from the Surrey Baptist Association in wake of that group expelling another church over its selection of a female pastor. Two-thirds of the congregation attending Sunday morning worship service at First Baptist Church in Mount Airy voted in favor of the pullout by paper ballot according to various members. The church has spoken, said Gene Garden, chairman of the First Baptist uh, Church. So what we're seeing is we're seeing now here's a church in Mount Airy that said, you know what, if you withdraw 
from this church because they have a female pastor, we're going to withdraw from the association. And all that means is, that means is that now they're, 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 their unity is disbanding. They're breaking apart. And it's all because they don't have authority. Or it's all because one group, the Baptist Association, says you need to have authority for why you do what you do. Now, I want you to listen to what the news says. Now, this is a, a, a video that, that uh, WXII said about the, the whole situation. I'm going to see if I can uh, pull this over here so we can all see it. I apologize for the, uh, I had it pulled up, but when I got up here, my internet wasn't working uh, quite right. Now listen, this is the, uh, uh, this is the news anchor or reporter, and here's, here's the video going along with this. Wanda, in many churches like this one, synagogues and mosques, a man and is the one that is in charge and at the head of the pulpit. But as more and more women try to break that tradition, they are being turned away. It's very painful. It's very painful. Reverend Ann Dalton preaching about the pain she's endured trying to do what she believes she was called to do. I've been in situations where the men ignored me. She's one of the associate ministers at Emmanuel Baptist in Winston-Salem, where women are encouraged to preach and lead churches. At one time, she was interim senior pastor at another triad church. I know beyond a doubt that God calls women, uh, that that was a call on my life to preach. If uh, men or other people have a problem with that, it's their problem. It is. All right, now let's stop right there for a minute. A lot, a lot of information was, was uh, given right there that I think is very interesting. And see, this is why, friends, we would say, how about give me the Bible? How about give some Bible verses? You know, she said she knew without a shadow of doubt she was called by God. Where is the authority? Where is the scripture? Where is the proof? You know beyond a shadow of doubt you were called by God, yet you didn't give a single verse, and that is where, how God does his talking. Did you know God talks through his word? And yet she said, God called her, but nowhere did we hear God say, nowhere did she say where God said he called her. And this is what we're dealing with, friends. She hurt her feeling. Her feelings got hurt because people would ignore her. Well, you know what? If she is doing what God says she cannot do, that is, she does not have the authority to do, then she needs to be neglected. She needs to be overlooked or she needs to be instructed in a way more perfectly. But you don't get to say, I was called by God, therefore you let me in. Now, friends, that makes every man his really only his own God. That's not the way we operate. We want to thus set the Lord for why we do what we do. And so this is the reason why uh, so many people are, are uh, upset, or this is the, the heated debate is what the, the headline says, over the female pastor. It's because somebody comes up and she's going, well, I want to be a pastor, <clears throat> and someone says, no, you can't be. Well, I got my feelings hurt. I'm going to go somewhere else. Friends, it never brings unity when you don't use God's word. Now, the Surrey Baptist Association is now realizing that this is what they need to be doing. They need to make sure they have Bible authority. And that's exactly, or I'd say not exactly, but this is the, the gist of what Billy Blakely, Dr. Billy Blakely, the director of missions for the Surrey Baptist Association said. Notice what he said. He said of the controversy, it is not about women in ministry. He said women are free to be teachers, workers, missionaries, and other positions, and that the church could not function without them. We just, he just believes Scripture prohibits women from senior pastorship having authority over men. Now, that's pretty close to what the Bible says, and that's true, a lot of it, in the sense of the church, the Lord's church, the church in the Bible, definitely could not function without women. But that is not to say that they are allowed or have authority to do anything they want to, anything their heart desires. You know, even, even David <clears throat> did not have a, a right to do what his heart desired. I mean, here's David, is a man after God's own heart, and look what uh, he, he is told. L look what, it, what he's told. 
In 2 Samuel chapter 7, it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all of his enemies, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelt in curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Now that is what people are saying today. They're saying, well, you know what? If it's in your heart to do it for the Lord, you just go and do it. You, oh, you have such a talent to play mechanical instruments, just go and do it. You have such a talent to speak, you need to go be a preacher, sister so-and-so. It's, it's a, just go and do it. But notice what the Lord said. Now here is Nathan the prophet said, go and do it. But notice in verse 4, it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan saying, go, tell, thy, tell my servant David, thus said the Lord, shalt thou build a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, and have walked in a tent and a tabernacle, in all the places where I have walked <clears throat> with the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, so shalt uh, thou say unto my servant David, Thus said the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, and from the following the sheep, to be a ruler of my people over Israel, and I was with thee whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made a great name, like unto the name of uh, the great men that are in the earth. Moreover, I will appoint thee a place, uh, a place for my people of Israel, and I will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And it's since the time that I commanded thee, commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from the enemies. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee in house. Now, but when he gets right down to it, he says to, he says to David, he said, but, he said, but you won't build me a house. You won't build me a house. You may want to build me a house, but you're not going to. You don't get to. I never told you to. That's not my mindset. That's not in my mind. I don't want you to. Just because you have an idea that you can serve God in some capacity, friends, does not mean that God is pleased with it. You need to get a word from the Lord to make sure it is what God wants. Now, <clears throat> Billy Blakely is, is on the right track. He says, look, it's not that we're saying you can't uh, uh, do something. It's just that you don't have the authority you cannot have authority over men. Now, friends, this is really the real issue that the Surrey Baptist Association is having to deal with. It is these churches, the Flat Rock Baptist Church and the First Baptist Church in Mount Airy and any of these other churches, the real issue they're having is they're having to deal with people who do not want to accept biblical authority. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. People don't want to accept biblical authority. So now you see what it's really like. Friends, when you start saying, I'm going to do what I want to do, then you're going to have trouble. And the Surrey Baptist Association is saying, or is realizing that very thing. See, uh, they're saying a woman is not authorized in the scripture. And that's really what we're talking about, friends. Authority for women pastors does not exist in the Bible. Now what we need to do is we need to do a little, uh, uh, let's go over it again. Let's go over some information about what a pastor really is. Let's look at the Bible. Let's get Bible authority. Let's call Bible things by Bible names and do Bible things in Bible ways. And let's see what the issue really is. Is there really authority in the Bible for women pastors. First of all, let's find out what a pastor is. In Ephesians 4, verse 11, Ephesians 4, verse 11, the only place this word is really used, the word pastor is used, is here. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now, I say it's the only place that word's used. It's, only, it's the only place that it's translated pastors. The word that's translated pastors is indeed found in the Bible and other places. But only here is it translated pastor. So I need to find out what a pastor is. What a pastor is. Well, if you look at this word, if you look at this word, friends, 
it is a job that elders are told to do. Now notice this. In Acts 20, in verse 7, we're going to slow down here. We're going to slow down here and notice this. In Acts 20, verse 7, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now that word feed that you see right here, feed the church of God, that word feed is the same word for pastor. You pastor the church of God. Now, he's talking to the elders. Let's back up in verse 17. Acts 20, in verse 17. Who is Paul talking to? From Miletus, he sent to Ephesus, and he called the elders of the church. He calls the elders of the church, and he tells them to feed the church of God, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Feed the church of God. Feed. So, so the elders are to do a job of pastoring. Pastor, feed means to pastor. Okay? Now, notice this. The elders were also told to oversee. In the same verse, now we know verse 17, we're talking to elders. In the same verse, Paul says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Overseers. Now, here's a word that you're going to find somewhere else in the Bible. It's going to be translated a little differently. But it's the same word, same original word, translated a different way. Overseers. What is an overseer? Elders are supposed to pastor, but they're also supposed to oversee. An overseer is a bishop. An overseer is a bishop. Here's where you find that word in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 1, <clears throat> this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a overseer, of an overseer, or of a bishop, same word, he desires a good work. Now, first of all, notice this. In this verse, Paul says, if a woman, no, 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 not a woman, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he, not she, desires a good work. The very first right out of the box, friends, when you're looking at the qualifications for a bishop, for an elder, for an overseer, who's supposed to be a pastor, is that it has to be a man. It has to be a man that desires the office in order to be a shepherd, an overseer, a bishop, or a pastor. And then a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Now, if we want to look at another verse that's going to show us that these are talking about the same things, notice this, Titus chapter 1 and verse 5, Paul says, For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou should have set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city. All right, well, how are you going to ordain elders, Paul? How is Titus <coughs> supposed to ordain elders in every city. How did you appoint him to ordain elders? What is Titus supposed to do? The same thing Timothy was supposed to do. Look at this. In verse 7, If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of right unruly, for a bishop must be blameless. Now, Paul said ordain elders, ordain elders in every city, and then he calls them bishops. You know why? Because a bishop and elders and overseers and pastors are all referring to the same office. They're all the same thing. Now, if a woman is going to be a pastor, if she's going to be a bishop, if she's going to be an elder, if she's going to be an overseer, <clears throat> she has to meet the qualifications. And one of the qualifications that she has to meet is to be a man. Now, I know there's some strange things going on nowadays where women can become men but that's not what Paul's talking about. Paul says, number one, a bishop is to be a man. Now, you just can't get around that, friends. A woman pastor cannot be a pastor because she can't be a man. Number one. Number two, Paul says, if they be blameless, the husband of one wife. Now, again, we're trying to make it, we're trying to confuse what uh, marriage is, we're trying to uh, confuse who can marry who, 
But any way you get around it, friends, or try to get around it, you still have to deal with husband of one wife. A woman cannot be the husband of a wife. Tommy might have two dads and he might have two moms, but he is not going to have the husband of one wife. Homosexuals does not make a husband and wife. See that? So you can't find authority for a woman pastor in the scripture. So the only way you're going to find have a woman pastor is if you say, well, that's just my interpretation. I'm going to go around it. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, 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 excuse it or overlook it. Now, friends, that's where we're having a problem. And really, when it gets right down to it, that's what the Surrey Baptist Association is having to deal with. They're saying women don't have the authority, and all these other churches are saying, we don't care. Again, welcome to our world. That's what we are constantly dealing with. People who say, I'm going to do what I want to do, and you can't uh, uh, change it. Now, let's look at what uh, the, the verse that was used in the report. I don't think we got to it. But here is the verse that, uh, that was used to, uh, uh, as proof that a woman cannot be a, a, a pastor. Is this. 1 Timothy Chapter 2 uh, and verse 12. Let's look at verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man but to be in silence. Now, Paul is not saying that a woman can't teach, period. He's not saying that she can't talk, period. This verse says that a woman cannot teach nor usurp authority over the man. Now I know she can teach because look what Paul says in Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2, look what he says in verse 3. The aged women likewise that they be in behaviors becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Now, if a woman couldn't teach, why would Paul turn around and say she, she'd be a teacher? See? It's not that she can't teach, period, but it's just that she can't teach certain places. That is, over a man. She cannot teach nor use authority over a man. Verse 4, the aged women, that they teach the, younger, the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children. Here's what they're supposed to teach. They're supposed to teach this, and this is who they're supposed to teach, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husband, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now to say that a woman does not have any authority to teach is wrong. But to say that she has authority to teach over a man, and you saw up authority over a man, is just as wrong too. See? So... What we're dealing with is where do you get where do you get authority for women to preach? Uh, during our tent meeting, uh, a lady came to the tent and she said she was a, a missionary. And we started talking about the Bible. To one of our brothers started talking to, uh, to the Bible about it. She said, "Well, I don't talk about politics or religion." What? You're a missionary. That's like telling a fisherman not to talk about fish. I'm a fisherman. I ain't going to talk about no fish. Let me tell you, every fisherman I know talks about fish. That's like telling a deer hunter. Let, let, me, let me talk to you about hunting deer. Oh, I don't talk about deer hunting. What? You mean to tell me you're a pastor, a preacher, a bishop, you call yourself a reverend, a teacher, a missionary, and you're not going to talk about the Bible? And the first question I'm going to ask you if you're a woman preacher is where did you get the authority? I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm just trying to ask you for Bible authority. Where did you get it? Because look at this. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, here's what Paul says. Paul said, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted for them to speak. But they are, to be, they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. Now, again, is that saying that a woman, when she comes into the church building... And, and worship starts that she can't say a single thing? No, because Paul tells her somewhere else to sing. See? But when it comes to speaking or preaching, or in this case, they were giving prophecy, she has to be silent. 
It's not permitted for them to speak. Now, I know this. I've heard a lot of preachers that said nothing, said a whole lot and said nothing, but they all spoke. They all made some sounds. And I know there's not a woman preacher who can preach and still be silent. See this? So, so friends, we're talking about authority. We're talking about authority. You may can do it, but that doesn't mean you have the authority to do it. Now, if you really want to know what we're talking about about authority, here's the real authority for all these churches. And this is why they're bringing in the women preachers and pastors, and this is why they're saying it's okay. The real authority for these churches is right here. The real authority is the almighty dollar. Sure enough. See, money is really the authority. Now, how do I know that? Well, let's go back and let's finish listening to this uh, audio clip or this uh, uh, news report that WXII uh, put out. And listen to what... Now, we're going to talk to a, a, a male preacher here, male pastor. I, I, don't, I don't think it, I caught the name, his name. But listen to what he says about women preachers, how he justifies it. Problem for the Surrey Baptist Association in Mount Airy, which voted to expel one of his churches after it appointed a woman as senior pastor. Billy Blakely, an administrator with the association, told me the Bible is clear on this issue, citing 1 Timothy 2.12 which says, do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over a man. She must be silent. I'm not surprised that churches have been put out. It's also a hot topic on WXII's Facebook page. With more than 100 people sounding off, one person writing, God does speak to women, but not to preach. Another says, that's why I left my last church. Just as God placed man as head of the home, so should the man be head of the church. And when it comes to the Bible, you got to use your brains. <laughs> you know, let's face it, there's a lot of stuff there that I don't agree with. Reverend John Mendez believes churches can't afford to continue. Now, let's stop right there. Reverend John Mendez. Where does he get authority to call himself Reverend? See, there's, there's, there's authority right there. But John Mendez, use your brain. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that doesn't make sense. Well, he's not using his brain. See, he's not using his brain. Now listen to him justify women preachers. This is good, friends. This is rich. If it'll play. You excluding women in this way. Because if women start leaving, um, members start leaving, church budgets go down. And it'd be Did you hear that? <laughs> if women start leaving, members start leaving, and church budgets go down. Well, I'm glad he didn't confuse the most important things with things like salvation or talking about that. You know, let's make sure we got our priorities right here. If people start leaving, budgets go down. Use your brain, he says. Some things in the Bible don't make sense. And if you start preaching the Bible, your budget's going to go down. Well, you know, God forbid we tell them the truth. See? So, budgets go down. Hard to survive. And back to the Surrey Baptist Association, Billy Blakely says that they aren't... Uh, John Mendez believes churches can't afford to continue excluding women in this way. Because if women start leaving, um, members start leaving, church budgets go down, and it'd be hard to survive. It's hard to survive. It'd be hard to survive if we do it God's way. Yeah, hard to survive if you do it God's way. Well, well, John... Yeah, that's tough. But doing it God's way is where you're going to survive in eternity. So really, that's really the, the authority that most people are using for bringing in women preachers. They're saying, well, you're going to lose all this money. But the Surrey Baptist Association is saying, no, we want you to use Bible authority, and you can't have women preachers. All right? Now, this is where we started, friends. This is where I said we were going. We've got to make some application here. I know that the Baptist Association knows how to find authority. Pardon my top error there. I know they know how to find authority. 
because they're saying 1 Timothy 2.12 said the woman cannot teach nor use authority over man. So they know how to find authority to keep women preachers out of the pulpit. So since we know they know how to find authority, because when it comes to something like this, boy, they can pull out the scripture. They pull out the scripture and say, no, and if you don't uh, abide by what is written in the book, we're going to withdraw from you and you will not be in our association. We're not going to have fellowship with you if you don't do what the Bible says. Now, we, we, know, we know they know how to find authority. And that's good, see? They've demonstrated they can find biblical authority. Okay. If they can find it on women preachers, can they find it in some other areas? See? Friends, when you start showing people you know something, now you're going to have to prove to them that you know something else. If you can demonstrate you know how to find Bible authority for women preachers, how about now you demonstrate for the rest of us how you find authority for things like, oh, let's say, one pastor. Now stay with me here. These Baptist churches condemn women pastors, but yet they're going to turn right around and have one pastor. Now, where do you get Bible authority for that? Where do you get Bible authority for one pastor? Let's look what the Bible says. In Philippians chapter 1, in verse 1, Paul, writing to the, to the Philippians, he says... Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints of, of Christ Jesus, which are out of Philippi, with the, deep, with the bishops, and we know bishops are elders, pastors, overseers, right? With the bishops, plural, and deacons. So there's plural there. So do you have bishops, pastors in the Baptist church? I know you don't. You got one pastor. You got one man rule. You got one man rule, and your creed books all say that that the pastor is the is the uh, uh, sole authority over the Baptist church. There now, where do you get authority for that? Look at this in Acts fourteen twenty three. In Acts fourteen twenty three, why didn't Paul say to ordain an elder in every church? When they had ordained them elders, plural, excuse me, in every church. Plural, elders, bishops, pastors in every church. And at prayer with fasting, they committed them to the Lord on whom they believed. Had a man ask me last night, he said, are you the pastor over there? I said, no, I'm the preacher. So you're the pastor? No, I'm the preacher. See, the problem is you don't know how the Bible talks. You've been listening to some, some man. The Bible says elders. Where did you get the right to be the pastor? Where did you get that? Now, I know you can find authority because you found it on women preachers. You drew 1 Timothy 2.12 out like a, uh, like, like a sword, like a knife. So let's, let's draw out the verse that says one pastor. Can you show it, please? Uh, Scotty, go ahead and let's put the phone numbers up. Would please? See, we're just simply asking you for authority. We know you can do it. I tell my, my daughter all the time, she, has, she does schoolwork, and she, does, she comes in, she's real happy because she made a, you know, an A on her test. That's good. Now, you know what? Now I know you can do it. Now you need to make all A's. See, you apply yourself, you study, you've proven that you can do it. Now do it again. You've proven, friends, I know that you know how to find authority for what you teach or what you believe. Let's do it again. Find the authority for one pastor in a church. Can you do it? Look what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 1. He says, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder. Now, do you think Peter was the only elder in the congregation where he was. Peter was a bishop. Peter was a pastor. But he didn't serve by himself because in every church there were elders, pastors, or bishops. You see? Now where's the authority for that? Where's the authority? When you see on one of these church vans going down the road or sign on the board road and it says that the bishop, bishop is... Elder 
so-and-so, so-and-so, pastor. Now, wait a minute. Do you really say that? I'm the, I'm the farmer plowshare sod buster. Elders, pastors, and bishops are all the same. Now, where's your authority for one? I know you can do it. Give us authority for it. Let's give us authority for it. Or what about this? Can you give us some authority for tithing? How about you give us some authority for tithing? I, I know you like tithing. I know you passed the plate. Oh, Steve Griffin up there at Osborne Baptist said they passed the plate every Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. Because it's always a good time to give. 2 Corinthians 9 7, where's the authority? Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves the cheerful giver. Where's your authority for tithing? Giving a 10%. Can you demonstrate it? See, friends, I know that you know how to find authority. I know that you can do it. Notice this. If you give, if you allow people to give as God says, they will give abundantly. They'll give freely. In Acts chapter 11 and verse 29, let's back up to uh, verse 27. In these days came prophets from Jerusalem to Antio unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified, by, uh, sorry about that, Claudius Caesar. Uh, verse 29, Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Now, if I was the folks in the Flat Rock Church, Flat Rock Baptist Church or the First Baptist Church in Mount Airy, and you really wanted to, you really wanted to uh, uh, get back at the Surrey Baptist Association, when they're telling you you don't have the authority for women pastors, I would say, well, why don't you show us authority for tithing? Why don't you show us authority where you can tell us to send our money to you? Because I know it's going to hurt. Look at this. And uh, when, when these churches withdraw or when they pull out, it hurts the association. It hurts the association. Let's see. Um, one of these churches, I think here, it's the, I think the Mount Airy Church. Funding change. Look at this. The First Baptist Church, with the First Baptist vote, comes a withdrawal of both its membership and funding to the Surrey Baptist Association, which one member put at about $9,000 annually. Now, why don't you turn around and ask the Surrey Baptist Association, folks up there in the, in the, in the First Baptist Church in my area, where do you get the authority to tell us that we have to send money to you? Where do you get the authority to have a, a, a big association like this where, where you tell us to send money? Where do you get the authority to tell us uh, uh, how much money to spend? Just find it. Now, I would turn right around and ask the First Baptist Church, look what they're going to do. Based on the wording, I, I know you probably can't read this, uh, it says, but... <clears throat> Based on the wording of the proposal considered Sunday, this money from the church's 2011-2012 budget will be divided equally between a number of organizations. So they're not sending their $9,000 to the Surrey Baptist Association. So what they're going to do is they're going to send it to these various organizations. One of them is the Salvation Army. So we're not going to send it to some other Baptists. We're going to send it over here to the Salvation Army. Where do you get the authority for that? Where do you get the authority to, to send money to the Salvation Army? You don't believe what they teach. You don't believe their doctrine. They're just as big as a church as you are. 
And here you are saying, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send my money over to them. Well, it's all about authority. But I guess when you don't want to do it, anything will work. When you don't want to do what, uh, when you don't want to have biblical authority, anything will work. Okay? <clears throat> so, find authority. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're, that's what we're dealing with here. So, where's the authority for tithing? That's what we're asking the Surrey Baptist Association or any of these other Baptist churches. See, you you can find authority for women preachers, find it for tithing. You can't do it. And just like the Reverend John, so-called Reverend John said, well, you know, when the budget goes down, we're all going to go down. Well, if you're not doing what God said, you ought to go down. You ought to work from the Lord. Good evening, my brother James. Good evening. Uh, Tell me, uh, you've got a better recall. I'm not with uh, close to my Bible or anything. Isn't there a scripture that says, uh, speaking of Jesus, it says, and reverend is his name. So if the Bible <coughs> gives that name to Jesus Christ, who, uh, what man has the authority to use that name? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's actually Psalm 111 and verse 9. It's talking about the Lord. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. So you're right. If a man is going to call himself reverend, he needs to do a couple things. Number one, he needs to send redemption to his people, which no man did. And he's going to have to have a commandment or a covenant that he's commanded them to follow. And no man did that. Right. So holy and reverend is the Lord's name. And you're right. When a man, I say when a man calls himself reverend, or a woman calls herself reverend, they're, they're actually putting themselves in the place of God. That's exactly. Uh, another thing, <clears throat> when uh, uh, you hear sometimes they, they'll introduce somebody uh, when they come to the platform, they'll say uh, uh, the reverend most, most holy reverend, so and so. I mean, that's like a, a double, uh, yeah, uh, double insult, isn't it? H holy right reverend. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. One other thing, uh, uh, not, uh, I'd like to uh, interject is uh, there is differences, just like in the Church Church of Christ, uh, from congregation to congregation. There's you know uh, slight variances. Uh, I, I personally right now attend the Baptist church and we don't we don't pass no offering uh, money's not uh, really brought up there's a, there's an offering plate to the side of the auditorium and whatever the Lord leads you how he's blessed you uh, it's a free will and uh, so uh, and there's another Baptist church up on 58 uh, going towards Stewart uh, I visited there, and they they the same way. They don't they don't preach on money. They don't ask for money. They have an offering plate at the back of the this church, a, and you just a, give as unto the Lord. You is, know? is this a primitive Baptist or a free will Baptist? What 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 kind of Baptist are you are you a member of? One what? is uh, one of the churches is uh, uh, independent Baptist, and I'm not sure about the the other one. It may be part of the association, and and. Uh, let me say this too, uh, brother. Uh, each, even if if the church is in uh, the the association, each church is autonomous, and they choose how much they give, and they can even uh, they can even uh, uh, give direction as to where it goes. For instance, I know a congregation that. There was a Baptist hospital, not the one in Winston, but a Baptist hospital that was uh, performing abortions, and uh, and and they said uh, they give uh, instructions. Not one penny of what we give can go to this institution or any institution that uh, you know is contrary to to the uh, to the word of God. But how, how do they know? Well, I mean, uh, they 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 can't. Uh, um, they, they are they are assured, but as far as uh, ironclad, uh, 
I mean, I'm saying if I'm given to if I'm given to an organization that I know does give some funds to it, you know, I would be inclined not to send my funds at all, lest I be contributing to, you know, the abortion clinic or whatever. Yes, I understand, and and that therefore <clears throat> there has been some congregations that, like I said, they they are uh, uh, autonomous. Uh, and they they can choose to stay in the association, or they can choose to withdraw. Well, what what is what is the benefit of the association? Working together uh, to uh, you know like uh, t- t- uh, t- a four hands uh, uh, makes for light work. Well, but I'm saying this: uh, we don't have an association like what you're talking about, but. The church in Eden and the church at Martinsville and the church at Danville, for example, we work together, you know, in a lot of things. Tent meetings go up, we're all there. Door knocking goes on, we're all there. See that? When, when we are, uh, if I'm out of town, whatever, I can tell one of the brethren, you know, you can have my airtime and, and, and so forth, vice versa. But we don't have a, 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 a board and, and all that. And to form an association, we're just talking about we're working together in the kingdom. But that, that's, what, what, so what, that's what I'm saying. So what's the benefit of a Baptist association? Uh, it, it's just like what you're talking about. It's just uh, it's it's gotten uh, so big that uh, you know uh, so many different churches, so many different states that uh, when something gets so big, there has to be some order to well, it, and well, that's what we're talking about. Well, how about this though? Here's a, here's the here's the real problem though. The problem is. You, you're you're in a church that you can't even find authority for in the Bible, and we're talking about finding authority for for tithing or whatever, or free will offering, which I know the Bible teaches that about free will offering. But how about you give us some authority in, from the Bible for being in the in the Baptist church you're in? Um, well, it's, uh, the Bible says clearly, uh, forsake not the assemblings of yourself together. Uh, but as that's the matter of some is. But so that's not the Baptist Church. To, uh, the day approaching. But that's not the Baptist Church. <clears throat> it's uh, the Church of Christ. Not the Baptist Church is not. No, I'm talking about the the body, the Church of Christ, the the Church that Jesus Christ shed His blood and died for. Is never called the Baptist. It, it, you can. Uh, a rose by any other name smells the same. But, but, sir, the Baptist church don't smell like the Lord's church. Well, I've worshipped with y'all on Starlin Avenue. But and, I'm, uh, but, well, that, but that's that I, one thing for being in our assembly, but you're not a member of the Lord's church. Well, I, uh, from, from what I read and understand in Scripture, uh, the blood has been applied to my life and... Uh, uh, I accepted it and, uh, and was baptized, and uh, and I've been faithfully attending and uh, involved. Faithful, and, uh, faithfully attending where? I, well, I, I've attended uh, just about you, every type of uh, uh, title. <clears throat> if, if a but, person wants to put a title, I've been to interdenominational. Here's and, the uh, thing, though, sir. Here, here's, the thing, here's what I'm saying, though. You're saying you're a member of the Lord's Church. Yeah. And you're supposed to assemble with the saints, but you're assembling in all these different churches that man made. Now, how are you assembling with God's people when you're over here in all these man made churches? Uh, well, I'm, I'm assembling with the, with the church, the blood bought church of God. Sir, Jesus did not buy the Baptist church with his blood. Well, the Baptist church didn't save me either. Well, but sir, you, you're not in the Lord's church. The Lord, sir, if you're in the Baptist church, you're not in the church you read about in the Bible. There's only one kind of church in the Bible, and it's the, it, it, it's the Lord's the church He bought. Now, it's not called, it's not described as the Baptist church. I read about three in there. You read about three? Yes. What? All right, it, there's reference to the Holy Catholic Church. In the Bible? Yes. There's, uh, Wh- there's where's reference that? to the uh, Church of God, and then there's uh, reference to the Churches of Christ. Where, where, what did you say, the Roman Catholic Church or the Holy Catholic Church? 
the Holy Catholic Church. Well, Catholic just means universal, sir. So we know we know that the church is universal in the sense of it's all in the world. Thank but it's you. not That's the Catholic, exactly but it's not I'm... the Roman Catholic Church. No, it's not the Roman Catholic. But church. sir, the it's church. Holy but, Catholic. but here's the thing, though, sir. The Personal Church of Church, the Church of God, and the Church of Christ, and the Universal Church is all the same kind of church. It's all the same kind. It's not a different kind. Is the Baptist different from the Methodist? Somewhat. Are the, are the Methodists different from the Apostolics? Somewhat, yes. All right. So they're not the same kind? No. All right. So that's what I'm saying. Those are different kinds, and the Lord's Church is the only kind you read about in the Bible. Now, if you're, in a, if you're worshiping or attending with the Baptist Church or the Methodist Church or the Lutheran Church or whatever church, then you can't say that you're a member of the kind of church you're in the Bible. You don't follow this book and get into a man-made church. That's what I'm saying. So I'm trying to say, where's your authority for worshiping in all these different places that actually worship and teach contrary to what the Bible says? All I'm saying is when, when I uh, accepted the redemption that was made on Calvary's Hill and the blood was applied to my life and I went through the baptismal waters and come out uh, I was part of the body of Christ and, and, and uh, when did you do this and, and where did you start worshiping in 1978 and where did you start worshiping well I was uh, I was saved and uh, I'm running out of time gotta be quick a Highland Baptist Church. Okay, so you weren't, you didn't obey the gospel, then, sir. You were baptized in the Baptist Church, and there's no way you can be taught and wind up in a Baptist church. You can't be taught the truth and wind up in a Baptist church. There's just no now, biblical authority for that. The the founder uh, of, of the churches of Christ uh, was baptized in the Baptist church. So Jesus Jesus was baptized in the Baptist church because Jesus is the founder of the, of the Lord's church. Alexander Campbell. No, is, we're talking about Jesus. Jesus is the founder of the Church of Christ. Yes, he, he's the founder of the church, the church. And it's not the Baptist church. Find where the Lord's church is described as Baptist. <clears throat> stay on the line. I'll talk to you after the air. i gotta, I got to get off the air. i got to go. All right. So, stay on the line. Stay on the line. I'll talk to you. All right, friends. See what we're saying? They, we know they can find authority. We know they can find authority for why they do what they do. Why can't they find authority for the Baptist church? This man, I'm going to talk to him off the air. Maybe he'll try. Don't see it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for Religious Review after the news. Till next time, remember that's what does the Bible say. You always get a word from the Lord, and then you can do your own Religious Review. Thanks for watching. everybody.